After watching 40 minutes of gameplay, I can assure you that LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is exactly what it seems to be. The biggest LEGO game so far, with a much needed shake up in the series classic formula, bringing it to a whole new level of production quality. I mean, just look how shiny the plastic material on Darth Vader is, and you know what I mean. Well, I enjoy what I saw, and if you can keep the same consistency during the whole campaign, which include 9 very different movies, we are in for a great experience. But that's a thought for the review. Let's begin this preview. I know that what I'm going to say now may give some people the wrong impression, but the best way that I can describe this game is saying that it is following some of the recent industry standards for AAA action-adventure games. But listen, no, I'm not saying that it is looking generic, it still is a LEGO game, but they are simply bringing elements that can give a new perspective. The camera close to the character's back, the new combat, the shooting, skill trees, side quests, open worlds, and more. My guess is that the idea here was to make the level design interesting and dynamic. One of my biggest problems with past LEGO games was the levels, usually feeling a little tedious after so many games following a similar pattern for level design. However, now the whole experience is way more immersive, the set design brings you into that world and in general it just ends up looking less video gamey, you know? Let's take a look at the first level of episode 4 as an example. I quickly noticed how the experience was engaging, the combat demands attention, rewarding the player that executes combos pressing different buttons. The same thing goes to the shooting, which is now a natural part of the gameplay and it feels much more integrated than how it worked on LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Puzzle solving remains very simple, but it keeps the level interesting asking a little more from the player. With all those elements together, the level progression was fun to watch, and I imagine would also be fun to play. Your ship has been boarded by the Empire, your highness! We are well aware of that, Admiral. Your trap! They're coming! In other levels, I could see how much variety there is in the gameplay department. We have, of course, classic dogfights, and to be honest, those sections don't need much to be awesome. You are controlling the ship and shooting enemies just like we saw in many other Star Wars games, including LEGO ones. But in the topic of variety, something that really caught my eye was a boss battle. In the footage you can see the face-off against Count Dooku in the beginning of episode 3, and here the gameplay changes drastically. The camera is always focused on the boss, and there's a system of attack, dodge and block. The player has to pay close attention to all movements of the enemy, and uh, it just feels really dynamic. Also, the battle takes a while too, Count Dooku had 3 life bars. I'm not saying that it looks super difficult or anything, but it certainly feels like a fair challenge. Even though it's a LEGO game, the fantastic animation makes the battle close to the ones that we saw in the movies, and that's no small feat. Okay, that was my general impression watching specific levels. However, after the two droids manage to successfully escape to Tatooine, we are presented to a whole new side of the experience. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga implements a system of free exploration when you are not in a mission for the main story you can freely explore a ridiculous amount of planets from the Star Wars universe. In this planet you will find quests, puzzles, characters, collectibles, and fantastical recreations of iconic places. I know that the open world concept is not something new for LEGO games, but I don't think they ever managed to get things to be this lively. Usually we have more of a hub than a proper open world. Here it almost feels like a simplified RPG to be honest. I can see myself easily getting lost in that world, exploring in many iconic places from the movies. The planets itself don't look that big, but seeing how many there are, this is understandable. The big question here is if there's enough variety and density to make each corner of the galaxy fun. In one particular moment during the free exploration, there was a collectible that Qui-Gon Jinn couldn't reach, so he used the force on C-3PO to carry him to that spot. That's exactly the kind of environmental puzzle that I really like. And uh, with different characters, the player can come up with different solutions, providing a great level of freedom. And that seems to be one of the main themes here, freedom. The player can travel between planets very easily, you can even change the episode that you are playing at any moment, and experience them in any order that you want. And of course, you can also change your character. There's a system of classes with each character fitting into one, Jedis, heroes, bounty hunters, scavengers, and more. Each class has a skill tree for abilities, and there's also a general skill tree for all characters. You can upgrade 
upgrades them with collectibles that you find while exploring. For example, here the player buys a general upgrade for sprinting, which seems to be great for exploration. What I really enjoy about that approach is that it's a great incentive for collecting items. It's that great feeling of progression and reward for exploration. And here I must point out the fun service, of course. As you'd expect from a LEGO game, the selection of characters is massive, with even creatures like Rancor being playable as any other. There's also a great selection of ships that you can change freely after buying, and uh, we could see, for example, the iconic Boba Fett's starship in action. The level of authenticity and attention to detail is fantastic. And, and that's another very important topic that I want to talk about. Let me point some cool details from the game. The dioramas that represent each episode in the starting menu are amazing. Not only the visuals, but listen to the sound. Something that I loved when I noticed. Take a look at the face that Leia makes when she is aggressively punching some stormtroopers. And also, another cool thing is how stormtroopers lose their helmets when they take damage, making them more vulnerable to headshots. And a nice detail, characters can get dirty if they are in a planet such as Tatooine where there are sands everywhere. And finally, the cutscenes are great as always, with a sense of humor that can make the most tragic scenes funny. A small touch that gives a charm to the experience is that in important scenes, the animation has a stop motion feel, like if those were actually toys, similar to the LEGO movie. Anyway, there's tons of small cool things, and as both a LEGO and Star Wars fan, I really appreciate the effort behind this project. And there you go, those were my initial impressions. So far, really hyped with what I saw, but I'll wait to see how the game will run on the Switch and how the overall experience will be. We'll cover more of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga here on the channel, so don't forget to subscribe for those future videos. Until next time, bye!